Most students spend way too long highlighting, underlining, and taking notes for LSAT reading comp. If you think about it, you only have on average eight minutes and 45 seconds per passage. Sure, some are harder, some are easier, but that is your average. And you have six or seven questions per passage. So if you spend more than two and a half or three minutes on your initial read of the passage and taking all those notes, you're not gonna have enough time to evaluate and solve all the questions. In my experience, the students who do best on reading comp mark very little or not at all. All those techniques for highlighting and underlining just don't make sense on LSAT test day when you have limited time. And of course, the digital LSAT has highlighting and underlining tools, but I would not recommend using them. It takes too much time to click around and make all those markings. Furthermore, those markings might hurt you later when you're going back to the passage, you're looking at the text, and you can't unsee what you've drawn or highlighted. You can't remove it easily. Once you've made a marking on the page, you're always going to be looking back to that marking even when you don't want to. So instead, I recommend no marking at all or a very minimal marking system. I recommend noting or marking for viewpoints, which are opinions, theories, and hypotheses, essentially equivalent to conclusions in logical reasoning questions. I recommend marking or noting where the evidence appears. Those could be details and supporting examples. And then finally, the advocates, who if anyone is promoting or advocating a particular position. I'd pay special attention to the viewpoints, especially the author's opinion, if any. That's gonna be your number one thing for when you go on to the questions. And speaking of the questions, I found that the best students, the ones who solve reading comp passages most efficiently, don't do the questions in the order given. And there's a reason for that. The general questions, like your main idea, primary purpose, and passage organization questions, all of those you could knock out first. In fact, with just your understanding of the author's opinion and the main idea of the passage, you can probably knock out two questions off the bat. Then you could do your detail-oriented questions, which sometimes reference a specific line, and finally save those inferential or most strongly supported questions for last. So again, order of difficulty in which you approach the questions on a passage can help save you time because it builds your understanding of the passage as you go. You're going efficiently, building your momentum, and building your confidence as you go through the reading comprehension passage. So those are my quick tips for 170 plus. I'll be sharing much more, so please subscribe and stay tuned for more.